I actually had a, a consultant, Ron. Now, those of you in Detroit know Arthur Penhallow, big, big, biggest rock star. His slogan was "Baby, baby, baby, baby." baby. baby. Probably have that somewhere. Anyway, this consultant came to town and told me to tell Arthur to stop saying baby. Baby. Now, he lived in New York, and this is before the days where everybody could hear everybody. He didn't understand what was going on in Detroit. So anyway, my point is that the, the you know, the, the suits uh, 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 invaded, and that was inevitable, because when there's money to be made, uh, that's what happens. And, you know, I'm not saying we didn't make great radio after the suits arrived, because we sure did, because they figured out some cool ways to get, you know, our clients money to do really great stuff, not only for our clients, but for our, for our audience. We had free concerts at Hard Plaza when nobody was doing anything. You know, it goes back to the days of the hayride back in the, in the South, right? Nothing's really new. You just reinvented. Right. Anyway, that era was just nuts because the, the disc jockeys were stars and the, and the bands were the, you know, journey and the stones. I mean, it was, it was insane. I, once again, Lucky, lucky pass man be thrown in the middle of that mix. You know, you brought it up, and this is something that I that comes up in episode three is the rock wars that were going on um, between you know WRAF and WLLZ and and ninety eight point seven. Well, ninety eight seven was LLZ, but th- then you also had ABX and W four before they went right. country. Uh, there was there was you know it, it wasn't it started out a little bit. Uh, Rough. There was some animosity, but when people started jumping around here, jumping around there, but you were knee deep in that. But you brought up Journey. Journey spent like an entire summer here, if I'm not mistaken, playing softball with all of you guys. What? And I do, I do talk about this in the yeah. docu series, but maybe you could share with us, uh, you know, a synopsis of the, of that time. <laughs> well, Journey's a good and Riff uh, is a very good example of. You know, two two parties who figured out that they could do a lot for each other, and um, you know, I think artists' relationships with with radio a, a, has always been important. But like everything else in that era, we figured out how to grow it, how to expand it. So instead of just Journey coming by and doing a quick interview in the afternoon, like you say, we they, we'd have them in for a week. They They'd sit in on the morning show for a, for a week. Um, we'd have a softball game where everybody um, could, all, all the fans could come and see their their rock stars try and play baseball, or or Steve Perry refusing to eat a hot dog because he was vegan even then. Um, but yeah, it, it was a nutty time, and and um, you know we mentioned Arthur Penhallow earlier, and Ken Calvert, two of my my heroes from the day, their relationships with that band, because Kenny used to work for CBS radio and therefore he, he knew the band before he got here. And I think he helped bring the relationship, you know, to the radio station and they loved Arthur who didn't. So yeah, they'd come in and hang out. Um, I remember Billy Squire was in town one night and he came in my office just to hide from his drummer because he was so sick of his drummer. He said, can I just hide in your office so I don't have to be around my drummer? So yeah, that was, that was a cool part of the, the, the era. Uh, 